Tom Likens. Thank you for saving my life, man. You know, I don't always agree with what you say, but I believe there's a lot of truth in what you say at the same time. You really do not like women, do you? I love women, as long as uh, their breasts are in my face. Oh, my God, I love you right now. You just don't know how much I'm glad you put it out there. I love you. I have no complaints. She was wild and crazy. She wouldn't say no to anything. Like yeah. a guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. Tom, you know, for someone that's an atheist, you really do preach a good word. When you're alone, you wake up, you've got a hundred different things you can do in one day, right? When you're in a relationship, you have one thing, what she wants to do. My heart is getting so hard right now because your voice just makes me hot. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I have a huge crush on you. I oh, boy. I can sexy and hot. Oh, my God, I'm in my car. I can't... I can't. <laughs> You're out of control. I know. Well, you make me out of control. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you out to certain South. Huh? Check this out. All right. Uh, I'm gonna take you out, Marilyn Monroe, eating sleeping pills style. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I made that up for you, man. I could tell. Hey, uh, listen, I really got to disagree with you today. Uh, you know, this woman is getting divorced. Uh, she's going to have depression coming. The stomach staples are coming out. I think there can be a shortage of food in America. Yeah. Well, I guess if you live at Star Jones's house, you might be a shortage of food. Uh, I'm on my way to Costco right now. You know? <laughs> he has to be well endowed because if she's that big, you have to have well enough package. You know, people are happy, I would say. No, she didn't need to Yeah, but how could you possibly have that if you had to look at her naked? That's my point. Hey, darkness is a good thing. <laughs> now we try to give people the idea that the administrator is the secretary. So what, well, is that, what, what does that leave you doing? Well, I, I'm in a headhunting, you know, position, so it, it's completely different. I mean, there, there's a lot of... I'm in a headhunting position, too, but I don't think it's quite the same thing. No, no, it's not. Absolutely not. Tonight about 8, I'll be in a headhunting position. <laughs> oh, my God. What college are you attending? Uh, I wasn't attending college. I right, I know. Okay, you hold, were... on, hold on, let me explain myself before you... You were going to Bonham Young University. Yeah, pretty much. No, but... Right, uh, that was the college I, I you was... were going to, right? Yeah, I actually started Bonham Young. Is that in Utah, Bonham Young? Yeah. Bonham Young like University. It. Yep. You knew what you did violated the rules of Lycus 101. Yeah. But you did it anyway. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea why I did. I mean, I... Because you're an idiot. Because you couldn't believe you were getting laid. And on top of that, ooh, how nasty is this? Your parents are Mormons. This is hot, hot, hot. That's why, right? <laughs> a little. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, huh? Yeah. You didn't put your hand over the fire. You sat right in the fireplace, son. You sat right on top of the logs. Your pants are on fire right now. Oh, man. Yeah. <clears throat> From a place we're not allowed to reveal, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Give me a darn break. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. Just a few weeks down, we're going to have Flash Friday every Friday. I, for one, am chomping at the bit. I'm ready. 
And we will announce that date really soon, but it's coming in just a few weeks. Flash Friday. I want you to know also this summer I'm going to be here all summer long. All summer. There'll be no repeats. Once we start with Flash Friday, I'm in for the long haul, baby. That's right. I can't wait. I can't wait. Meantime, Southern California, and I don't know where you are, and many of our listeners are in Southern California, but what a great weekend this is going to be. Look at the weather out there. Look at the sun out there. Feel the heat, baby. This is one of those springtime weekends you are glad to be living in California. And if you don't live in California, this would be one of the weekends you wished you lived here. Fantastic. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we talked about this week on the program and some of the things we talked about this week. (laughs) We had a very interesting conversation about things you do early in a relationship that you wouldn't be caught dead doing otherwise. Like going to the farmer's market on Saturday morning or going to Ikea. Going to her church. (laughs) How about uh, this week? Don't mean to make light of a tragedy, but hell, that's my stock and trade, right? How about the two who are hiking in Bronson Canyon? Did you see that? This Was it Bronson Canyon, boys? I believe it was. Bronson Canyon in the Hollywood Hills. And the woman was about, uh, you know, early 20s and the guy was uh, early 20s. And they were climbing up the rocks in Bronson Canyon, and they got trapped, and the paramedics had to come get them. And uh, that that tied right into what we'd been talking about. And the reason it tied right in is because I could just hear it. I was reenacting the conversation in the studio when we were watching the news story. It was great. It was like, <laughs> it was like come on! I can't be with somebody who's not athletic like, like I am. We gotta go hiking. Come on. And the dork uh, actually agrees to do it even though he's never gone hiking, doesn't like hiking, doesn't have any interest in hiking. I don't have to know the two people to know what, what happened there. You know exactly what happened there. Wow. So, uh, that's one of the things we talked about. Things you do early in a relationship that you would never do. Any other time? How about uh, Leslie Bennett, the author who wrote the book called Why Men Don't Pinch in, Pitch In? And uh, she talked about how she uh, harangues and nags and threatens and withholds sex so that her husband will pitch in with the household chores. We had posted a photograph of them on our MySpace page this week. And now a listener who was uh, very much uh, on the beam here, uh, found a video of Leslie Bennett speaking at an engagement. She spoke for about an hour, and uh, I don't have to say anything about this. I can just tell you that nothing you heard in the article we read from Leslie Bennett, the excerpt from her book this week, Nothing in there will surprise you once you see the video. That's all I have to say. You can leave your comments about the video on our MySpace page. That's myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. MySpace.com slash Tom Likas. If you forget that, you ignorant, illiterate moron, you can go to our website, blowmeuptom.com. And it will link you to our MySpace page. And you can see this video. You don't have to watch the whole video. I mean, if you want to, you can. Because the more you watch it, the the more... You know what I recommend? Mushrooms. I mean, seriously, if you're going to watch this video and you want to get maximum entertainment value, some kind of hallucinogen would be in order. But it's the first video on our MySpace page, myspace.com slash Tom Likas. Take a look at Leslie Bettis. Just take a look. You can comment on the page. You can call in and comment. It's all good. We talked about Earth Day this week and how everybody's going green. 
<laughs> By the way, I just put a bunch of uh, bunch of beers and a bunch of cokes in the freezer here. Took some of those plastic rings off the cokes, you know, and uh, tossed it. Hate to see some seagull get nailed by that, but what are you going to do? What am I going to do, carry an armload of cans of Coke? Forget it. Not doing that. Uh, we had lots of fun with Star Jones's divorce. The only person surprised about Star Jones getting a divorce is, of course, Star Jones. We all knew what was happening. Many of you saw the story after we talked about it, the story of the rice shortages. The fact that people are afraid that there's a rice shortage, a flour shortage, a cooking oil shortage, and they've been stampeding into Sam's Club and Costco and, and, and stocking up. And Costco has had to put a limit on how many pallets of rice people can buy. <laughs> loads, loads, loads. We talked about them. We had some fun on what I call Secretary's Day, but they now call it Administrative Professionals Day. No, actually, they now call it Administrative Professionals Week. Holy Christ. And uh, we did a show about the 35-year-old grandmothers this week, and I thought there was nothing lower than a 35-year-old grandmother until a 29-year-old grandmother called in. Holy schmagoli. All of those things, you can call in about those. You can call in about anything we didn't discuss this week. We didn't get into Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. We didn't get into politics. We did not get into these three police officers uh, in New York uh, who were acquitted today. That's because it happened today. They were acquitted today of, uh, well, they, they, they shot a prospective bridegroom at his bachelor party 50 times. And there's no evidence the guy was involved in any criminal activity. So in New York, they're a bit on edge right now. New Yorkers love to tell you how civilized they are, and now we hear they're uh, afraid of riots in New York City. Well, just the way they say that, you know, if L.A. had an earthquake, good, good riddance, good riddance to bad rubbish. You know, if the civilized citizens of, citizens of New York want to burn down Manhattan, live it up, boys. Show us how civilized you all are. Love it. Anyway, wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. All you have to do, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. But you pick up the cell and you call 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Your telephone call's coming up next. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Me and my friends have a little drinking game with your show. For every minute that you're on the phone with a stupid bra... We have two shots. And t- let me tell you, man, every Friday is party night. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. I am hearing the radio station feeding back at me. Now I'm not. That's good. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Elizabeth on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How are you? Do you care, darling? Are you kidding me? Really? I knew I knew you'd ask that. I'll tell you, I, I care every day, every day. <laughs> You'll have to come over and show me one of these days. <laughs> well, I just wanted to get your opinion about this um, this whole tax rebate thing that they're sending out this week. I am just furious. Um, you know, the fact that Bush wrote an, in the article I read this morning that um, he says, oh, yeah, you know, we're sending it out early because what we hope to do is that this is going to, the Americans will put the money back in the economy with the 600 bucks that they're sending us. I mean, I right. can't believe that. By the way, don't spend it all in one place. You know where I'm spending it, at the gas pumps. 
I mean, that's nuts. I mean, what does he think? That $600 is going to help us, that we're going to go straight? By the way, thank you for that, because I do own that uh, Energy Mutual Fund, and uh, it owns uh, shares in all the oil companies. So uh, get right down (laughs) to the gas station with that rebate check, please. Oh, my Lord. You know, I mean, if I get that check, I'm just going to frame it, and and I am just going to put his quote underneath it and sell it on eBay. That is just nuts. Oh, yeah. It's going to stimulate the economy. (laughs) <laughs> I, mean, I just, I, I just, you know, the guy has no shame, and I was just absolutely shocked. So, I'm still absolutely shocked. Frankly, uh, I, I am kind of blown away by this idea that uh, people getting that check that they think it's going to uh, stimulate anything. The economy is in the tank. It's not going to revive the real estate market. It's no. not going to stop the nuts from running down to Costco and buying up all the rice. <laughs> You know, you know what they're going to do with that deer. They're they're going to go and get more rice. <laughs> <laughs> That's about what it's going to cost by the end of this week. Oh no, kidding! No kidding. So all it is is just you know keeping the economy, just turning it more into a sinkhole with the checks he's sending out. You know, exactly. I mean, if he really wants to make a difference, he might as well. You know, if he really cares about helping the economy, the check should be more than like five or ten grand. I mean, that's just nuts. But I right. mean, you know, six hundred dollars is an insult. Yeah, but, but if single, they if they sent taxpayer. but if they sent ten grand to fifty million people, you know how, how much that would be, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I mean, yeah. uh, we're already in the hole about five hundred million dollars a year. Yep. Correction: five hundred billion dollars a year. Five hundred billion a year. Right now, that gets added to the national debt every year to pay for the war in Iraq, primarily. Yeah, you know, somebody made a comment went, uh, to me the other day that unless you make six figures in this country, um, you are you are right there with everybody else. You know, if a guy's making sixty grand compared to someone who's making forty grand, you are right there with everybody. There really isn't that much difference anymore. Yeah. And, and by the way, the fact that and we were talking about the Starbucks story before anybody, people are bailing on Starbucks in droves. <laughs> The the five dollar cup of coffee. If if you ever needed an indication that the economy is in the crapper, mm-hmm. look at the fact that all of those freaks are finally abandoning Starbucks. Exactly. Exactly. You know, they're getting coffee at Seven Eleven now. <laughs> they don't even care what it tastes like anymore. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. No they amount to, of coffee is going to help what what kind of you know where our head is right now. They go so. to see the, they go to see their barista at Seven Eleven, Ahmed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Can I have a caramel macchiato? Did you want unleaded with that? <laughs> That's right. If you can even understand what they're saying anymore, but <laughs> That's right. Good lord. <laughs> All, right. All right, Tom. Well, I just wanted to. Just vent about that a little bit. I just It's really getting to me. So, Well, thank you so much. I'm so glad you did. Oh, absolutely. Can you take me out with a whip, please? Oh, yes, I can, darling. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> Got to love that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Now, Dean just put in his vote for McDonald's coffee. He said it's awesome. And um, it's not just Dean saying it. Consumer Reports uh, did a uh, report on drip coffee, which included Starbucks, and they pronounced McDonald's to have the best coffee of anybody, any of the major national chains. So uh, anybody who's still spending five bucks in a cup of coffee, or even a dollar seventy-five on the drip coffee at Starbucks, or a dollar sixty, or whatever they're charging for it, depending on where you are. <laughs> Consumer Reports said McDonald's has better coffee. I just love hearing that. You know why? Because I always hated those people who go to Starbucks. I always hated the concept of it. I always hated the attitude of the customers at Starbucks. and I just love seeing them all fleeing. <laughs> Gotta love it. They're not lording anything over anybody now. Now that they're at the Chevron station getting coffee. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Sarah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Sarah. Hey. Hey. (laughs) Um, How are you? I'm doing okay. How about you? I'm doing great today. What Um, up? I had some 
some financial questions. Um, earlier this week, you talked to someone who was in college, and you talked to them about a Roth IRA. Um, I wanted to ask your advice about how about somebody who is just out of college. I'm 24. Um, I'm doing my first job right now. I'm a teacher. I make about 50k a year. Um, I don't have any debt, no credit card debt, and about 10k in my savings. And I, I'm looking to invest. All right. Uh, number one, like I tell everybody, I mean, are, are you completely debt free, right? Yes, completely. I have no no debts, no loans, nothing. How did you uh, get away from college without a student loan? Uh, my my dad was a longshoreman, and he paid my way through college. So and grad really, school. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I'm lucky. <laughs> what can I say? That's good. mm Hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, um, once you have uh, uh, made sure that you've got zero balances on every credit card. Yeah. Um, and once you have started a Roth IRA, uh, uh, do you have a 401k at work or a 403b? Yeah. I, I work for the public school system. We have a pension. Four, it's a 403b, is it? I'm not sure, actually. I'm, I'm first year. I haven't looked into it. Okay. Uh, I think if you're working for uh, a school district, it would be a 403B, which is essentially the government version of a uh, 401K. Uh, make sure you're maxing out on your contributions to that. Are you? Um, no, not yet. I will be. Uh, well, that would be the first place you would go. Okay, first thing to do. Got it. First thing to do. And that find out what the maximum is that you can you can contribute. Okay. Do you know, even know what that is? Because it could no, be I as don't. I don't. I know. I'm new to all this financial stuff. It's my first real job, so. All right. Well, a 401k is. Um, uh, I think now it's up as high as is it fifteen thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. So, um, where does that put you at once you've put fifteen thousand dollars in there? Assuming you could put fifteen thousand in. Yeah. The, 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 does that leave you with money left over? Um, yeah, it should. I right. because it's 15000 per year in the 401k. Oh, oh well, yeah, I, I only use about 2000 a month. I I'm live below, you know, I only use the basic of what I, what I make. Okay, so, so be sure to do that. Okay. The, um, the IRA uh, is, I believe, $5,000 now. Uh -huh. And fifteen thousand for the four hundred one k, or and again the four hundred three b has slightly different rules, so you got to check on that. But that can be twenty thousand a year in investments right there. Oh wow! Okay. So cool. do, would you have more than that to invest? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, but those are the places you should be putting your money right now. Okay. Because at your age, you could end up, in fact, are likely to end up a multimillionaire if you just keep putting that amount in every year like clockwork. Okay, sweet. That's no borrowing against it, no withdrawing it to, to buy a house, none of that stuff. All right, you got it. All right. All right. Um, all, all my right. friends love you. All my guy friends love you. Just wanted to say that. Thanks for talking to me. Absolutely. Not a problem. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ryan. It is so great to talk to you, man. I'm sure it is. Got to tell you something. I'm out here in uh, Tempe, Arizona, where I used to listen to you every single day until they removed Free FM from here. And I just downloaded iTunes and today and figured out that I can listen to your show every single day again. Great day. <laughs> I love that. Listen, l let me tell you something. I got a little short story to tell you. Um, I was dating a girl for three years and I was just miserable and I still listen to you every day. I just, she had my balls in her purse and I laughed every time you told someone that because I said, yeah, that's me too. And um, as soon as they got rid of free FM, they turned it into another hip hop station. Like we needed another one out here. Yeah, And um, I remember she hated me listening to you, and she turned it up, this hip-hop song, really loud, and then just drove off laughing. And I was like, that bitch! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, it wasn't, you know, three or four weeks later, I dumped her. And I've been of course. Doing, I'm so happy now, and you are the man, Tom. Oh, my God, I get to listen to you every day again. I think that's great. 
Oh, my goodness. Listen, I just want to say that um, someday I'm going to be in your studio. I'm going to be uh, some famous guy doing something. I don't know what. <laughs> and uh, uh, can you take Sonny Bono style? Sonny Bono style, I can, of course. Here yeah. you go. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I've been listening to you, and that is the best advice. Keep her out of the house. Oh, my God. She tried to. She's like, oh, I, I need a place to stay for, for just a week. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Go stay no. with one of your gay friends. No, no. That's right. That's right. Stay with one of your gay friends is a good answer. I like that. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. I'm 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. The Leslie Bennett video on our MySpace page is getting a lot of response. You remember Leslie Bennett was the author who uh, makes her apparently pussy whipped husband uh, do chores around the house, nags him, threatens him, withholds sex from him. Uh, see if you think that would be punishment enough. Uh, go to our website, uh, blowmeuptom.com, and it'll take you right through to our MySpace page, or just go right there, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. It's the first video on the main page there. Take a look, and feel free to post your response, or call in with it here at 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Danielle. Danielle, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Punch up line one, Danielle. Hello. Well, um, I was going to tell you a little story that happened to me lately, and I was going to get your opinion. And um, first of all, I like to tell you, you know, I listened a long time ago to you, and I, I couldn't stand it. And then for some reason, a few months ago, I started listening again, and I almost agree with almost everything you say. So it's kind of funny. Changed it happens eventually because you realize that. Uh, I may be direct and in your face, but you can't say that what I'm saying isn't true. Right, right. And I do learn a lot. I mean, even though I'm a girl, I do kind of learn a lot from what you tell the guys. So it's kind of cool. What do you learn? Um, you know, I always thought it was strange. That I didn't want to have kids. I didn't want to get married. You know, grew up in the 70s, and that was kind of the thing to do. And that it's okay just to have fun and not get serious. And... um. You know, also, you know, when you're young, when you're younger and you're a girl, you're insecure. And I look back at a lot of things I did to my boyfriends. I feel really bad about it, you know, and some of them I've told. So I think I've just grown more and listening to you. It just kind of reinforces that, you know, you don't need to. I've never been the kind that needed a guy or had to catch one. But, um, you know, kind of just reinforces that. And it's kind of cool. Well, that's good. Yeah. So you didn't call about that. No, actually, I tried to get in last Friday because I, I was I want to get your opinion on something, but it's it's a little bit after the fact. But anyways, um, uh, New Year's Eve, I hooked up. I'm 43, but um, I hooked up with a 19 year old, and we were together for about three months. He doesn't have a lot of money. I'm basically the educated one with the money, but I was having fun. You know, it was great. And as soon as the fun's over, then you know, I kicked him to the curb a few weeks ago. But in the process, I found out he had a little girlfriend in Illinois who is extremely loyal, waiting for him, has no idea what he's doing out here. He dated a friend of mine, too. So I guess my question last week <laughs> was, um, do you think I should tell the girlfriend? What, what would be the point of that? Um, you know, a lot of my friends told me to do it. And at first I was like, no, 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 because I don't want to be a B. You know, that's not my thing. But... Um, I talked to a few people, and it's like, you know, if it was me, whether it's a girl or a guy, and you actually think, you know, things are cool, even though it's long distance, it's like, would you want to know? If someone knew that you're... That's none of your business. Pardon? It's none of your business. I see. You used him at least as much as he used you. Right, but um, I guess the thing... Then you that... dumped him at at the appropriate time, correct? Yeah. When you were done with him. 
So you not only dumped him, on top of that, you're proposing then to, 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 to hurt him somehow? Well, I guess I think that he should just have fun, and it's almost like he's doing what you tell girls not to do to guys. But you're doing what I tell guys to do. You got what you wanted out of this guy. Why do you need to then hurt him somehow? I don't understand. I guess it's not so much hurting him. Yes, it is. No, that's how you've rationalized it. That is how you've rationalized it. And why do you want to hurt him? What did he do to you? Um, <laughs> I he guess serviced he you, honest. but wh- what do you care? You you had no interest in him. This was not a love relationship. You used him because he was young, and he gave you sex, and you you got what you wanted, and then dumped him. Right. You I mutually is- you mutually used each other. Did you tell him your plan was to dump him when you'd had enough of him? Well, I knew he was leaving May the 4th out to sea, and I probably maybe wouldn't see him again. So that was kind of in there. Did you tell him that your plan was to dump him? No, I didn't come out and say my So you were not honest with him, were you? Well, we knew it was temporary until May 4th. That was our plan, to hang out. Right. So it was temporary until May 4th. You do not, you know, if, if the girlfriend was your friend, your sister... Your aunt, your mother, Mm -hmm. that would be a different story. This is a person you do not know. Right. That's number one. Number two, male or female, anybody who's ever called this show running by some plan for revenge has been shot down. Right. What is the point? You don't give a rat's ass about his girlfriend. You don't know who she is. You don't have any vested interest in her. No, not personally. I guess one thing I did not say personally. Him, what, what other way would you have it? But personally, one one thing I there did are no him, mitigating though. circumstances here. Mm-hmm. You have no connection to that girl. No, except that I am another girl, and if someone was cheating on me, I would want to be told. I'll tell you what. If I'll tell you what, if you've got full blown AIDS, I would call her. Yeah. But other than that, it, this is none of your business. It's the slimy stuff that makes men feel the way we do about women. Okay. And by the way, I've told men the same thing. They want to get back at the ex-wife or the ex-girlfriend. Living well is the best revenge. Okay. I yeah, never I waste five seconds getting revenge on anybody. And this guy... You you were equally complicit here. You he did not use you any more than you used him. Yeah, I guess the only little thing that's different in here is that I was completely honest with him because what I. What does it matter? Him. Were you planning on marrying him? No. Were you in love? In lust. <laughs> so why does it matter what he told you? I guess I feel like honesty is a really good thing. To you're so full of crap. Honesty is a good thing if you get married. Honesty is a good thing if you're having a serious, intimate relationship. Deep feelings are involved. Right. But for Christ's sake, this guy was just there to have sex with you. What do you care? If he didn't lie to you about having AIDS, if he didn't lie to you about having some kind of deadly illness that, that you could catch and die, what does it matter? Yeah, I guess in the big scheme of things, it doesn't. I, it's just that I was... No, no, in any scheme of things. No, no, it doesn't matter in any scheme of things. You're still being an immature teenager. So do you think the fact that um, I told him I was honest with the other people I was dating and, to, and Irrelevant. I met this guy? Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Okay. Irrelevant. Because you were not you were not in love with this guy. He was not in love with you. You were not marrying him. You were not in love with him. Well, he, he was doesn't calling oh, he, me his girlfriend to his friends. I, I don't care. You you that. just said to me you knew that it was going to end on May fourth. Yes, you yes. said that. So yes. that's it. Yeah. What do you care what he said? So I don't need to teach any honesty lessons. <laughs> what are you doing teaching honesty lessons? By the way, you you said he's nineteen and you're forty three. Yeah. The fact that he had sex with you that was a charity, a work of charity. You should be thankful that he wanted to give you what you needed. 
Okay. Well, Let I'm, him move I mean, on I'm... and stop being a little girl. You know what? It is such a waste of time and energy. And I'm not telling you this because you're female. I tell this to everybody. Okay. Revenge is a complete waste of time, and it shows immaturity. Okay. Well, Believe I me, I have been I, – I, by the way, I, 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 I have said many times, there are many women of my past who did things that I didn't agree with, did things I didn't like, or were dishonest with me in one way or another – and you know what my best revenge is? When they have to look at me on TV as a multi-millionaire, right. living it up, while they are living in low-budget, low-rent apartments somewhere, right. hoping as they turn 40 and 45 that men will talk to them. <laughs> <sighs> Who's got the better end of the deal? Right. I'll, I, I've told the story of the woman in New York when I was broke. And I was working at Citibank. I swear this is a true story. I was in New York, desperate to get into the radio business. And my job was not in the radio business. I worked at that 800 number at Citibank. When you got a problem with your visa bill, you dial the 800 number. I was the yeah. guy who answered the phone. Okay? And uh, that just didn't pay enough for her liking. So one day while I was at work, I got a call around lunchtime. And my girlfriend told me that she had put all my furniture and all of my things outside her apartment door, and she had called the locksmith to change the locks, so I'd better come up there and get my stuff before it gets stolen. Oh, that's nice. While well, you're She at ended the conversation by telling me, listen to this, she said to me, call me back if you ever get a better job. <laughs> what is better revenge than sitting here talking to four and a half million people? Now I am a multimillionaire. And she is now an unmarried 46-year-old who's into swing dancing. I've seen her picture on the Internet. She now weighs, you know, 165, 170 pounds. No. Still never remarried, no children, nothing ever happened in her life relationship-wise. And wait I'm here. From you. I am here a multimillionaire. No, no, no. She did not wait for a phone call from me. Do you know what she did? <laughs> she saw me on 2020 and called the radio station where I was working. Oh, no. And she asked me, do you ever get to New York? Oh, no. <laughs> and I said all the time, we should get together. Uh, no. You told me to get a better job. I guess I did, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> now, now, isn't that a better way of getting revenge than your little childish thing of calling this guy's girlfriend? Yeah, it is. It is. It just shows that you've got nothing else up your sleeve. You've got nothing else to lord over him. And why do you need revenge on him anyway? He wanted to bone you. You wanted to get boned by a 19-year-old. It was an even trade. You each got what you wanted. Who cares what method was used? You each got what you wanted, suffering no permanent damage of any kind. Right. What? It, why is there a need for revenge here? I don't see it. You're right. I guess it's just immaturity, like you said, you know. it's just um, Well, pretending you give a rat's ass about his 18-year-old girlfriend in Illinois who you've never met. Right. Is, you know, you can try that on your girlfriends, but that doesn't work on me. Right. You don't give a rat's ass about her. You're trying to hurt him. You're, you're right. I am trying to hurt him, but I do feel sorry for her, whoever she is. No, you don't. <laughs> she should be out bagging guys, too, not waiting for this guy. What makes you think she isn't? Oh, the vast majority of these little girls who hook up with the military guys are boning everybody on the base. Yeah, well, Most of these guys, together or I don't care. You know, we've yeah. done this show so many times. Most of these girls are out there boning everybody that moves. The minute these guys leave town, you really think she's sitting there pining away for him? Give me a break. She's home with her MySpace page and her cell phone and her text messages, and she's going out with any guy who'll have her. I hope she is. Her MySpace page is basically dedicated to him and pictures of him and her, but, you know. Right, right, right. <laughs> I hope she is, man. <laughs> and, and why are you so interested to be reading her MySpace page? I mean, come on. Don't you uh, have, well, he, this is don't you have any business to attend to? No, this is, Tom, this is how I found out. I have an iPhone. I was in the store. I came out, and he was using my iPhone, and later on, after I dropped him back at the ship, I pressed the Internet to get on, and boom, there, there it came up, the, her MySpace. You are, so like, darling, for it. you are 14 years old. Who's in your fave five, dear?
outrageous. The Tom Likas Show.